Hi, I'm excited to have the opportunity to speak with you. I want to provide my unbiased perspective on the critical role of managing bias in AI. Does that sound ridiculous? Well, that's because it should, since there is no conversation without bias. As humans, we perceive our environments, our experiences, and that affects our perspective. This lens, this perspective, is bias. Similarly, an AI perceives its environment, its experiences, and this is in the form of data, and this affects its perspective. This perspective that the AI has learned from the data influences and creates bias in the resulting AI. But we want to know we can trust the AI and be able to understand how and why it came to a recommendation. But what does AI look like in action? A good example is an algorithm that predicts credit risk from your credit history and assets. And this is based on how people similar to you have behaved in the past. In other words, the algorithm is scoring you based on the behavior of other similar individuals. And algorithms are really good at this. In 2019, Apple and Goldman Sachs released a credit card aptly named the Apple Card. But when Janet Hill pulled out her iPhone and applied for the Apple Card, instantaneously an algorithm issued her a card. But she was given a credit limit that was 10 times lower than her husband. They share all the same assets and they share all the same accounts. Yet her husband, who happened to be Steve Wozniak, got 10 times the credit that she did. Now the algorithm doesn't even use gender as a factor. They didn't want this bias to exist. In fact, they made sure gender wasn't even a consideration in the algorithm. But before we address how this likely happened, I want to use a story to explain some of the different types of biases that exist. In late 2017, I started a team to help companies climb the ladder to AI. When we set out on this mission, we established a cognitive bias by having a goal to create a team that was as diverse as possible. We created a framing bias by centering the entire hiring process to support our cognitive bias. After that, we did something quite simple. We worked to minimize a selection bias by using a set of job postings that were designed to be more inclusive. We took this approach as there's a difference in the types of job descriptions that different groups will and will not apply to because of an implicit bias. In addition to these simple adjustments to the job postings, we set a requirement. Before anyone could start interviewing, we needed to make sure we had a pool of qualified candidates that's at least 50% diverse. This decision of consciously establishing a selection bias proved to be one of the most important parts of bringing this team together. It was so simple, but it was so impactful. And I want to be clear, we had no requirement on the mix of candidates that we would or would not offer jobs to. In fact, we had a very rigorous process and only the most qualified candidates got hired with no exceptions. When we finished, the team of 100 data scientists was nearly twice as diverse as the industry average, with nearly an equal number of men and women who spoke more than 26 different languages and were from a wide variety of cultural, religious, and geopolitical backgrounds. Underneath all this was a confirmation bias in the form of a set of academic and real-world research that was hand-selected. But why is this so important when we start to think about the development of AI? The same types of biases that are expressed in the story about the data science team apply directly to AI. That's because humans build AI and we come to the table with a set of biases. And data is used to teach or train the AI. And data has bias that's based on the historical decisions and actions of humans. These factors impact the level of bias an AI will have. So if we go back to the Apple Card example, while they explicitly removed gender, there were other factors associated with gender that the AI algorithm identified in order to classify individuals based on a perceived risk. These features of the data are based on a historical bias, but were not explicitly, are you a man or are you a woman, However, they were still associated with being a man or being a woman and led to the unintended bias that occurred. As we look at the pandemic we're facing, 
it's only increasing the rate and pace of adoption of AI. I know sometimes AI can seem abstract, but you are already impacted by AI every day. It's in every industry, from media and entertainment, when you think about Netflix recommending a movie to you, to automotive, with the autonomous and semi-autonomous cars driving around, even telecommunications, with the need to automatically allocate and prioritize network capacity based on demand. And finally, to the response to the pandemic, as we are forecasting the impact that rates of infection have on economies being able to reopen or not. And bias in any of these interactions can have a direct impact on our lives, from the simply annoying when Netflix tells you to watch Bridget Jones and you really just want to watch Fifth Element, to predicting what happens to the availability of critical supplies if the pandemic shuts down an entire economy. As AI becomes more pervasive, we need to understand, mitigate, and remediate bias in AI. And the development of an AI algorithm can be thought of as similar to our own human development. As we are born mostly without biases, AI algorithms are not inherently biased, and environments introduce bias to us both positive and negative. And data is the alg algorithmic equivalent to an environment for AI. External pressure causes us to adjust our biases over time, just as data changes over time. And as we mature, we're in introduced into new environments, just as AI algorithms learn from new data over time. AI is very good at picking up on small details in their environment and classifying groups or individuals based on the data, which is sometimes biased. So if we think back again to the Apple card. Gender was absolutely not a feature of the algorithm. And if AI has no inherent bias, then where did this bias come from? While data sets may seem like the most obvious source of bias in AI, bias can also be introduced by teams that don't have proper training. And if teams are not sufficiently diverse, they're more likely to introduce a cognitive bias when they're setting up the problem, or a framing bias as they lay out the experimental design or a selection bias when they start picking algorithms. And this is in addition to whatever biases may already exist in the data from the historical actions of humans. So let's go through another story. Several years ago, a bank started using AI to decide if mortgages should be given to applicants or not. Since this decision can have serious long-term impact on the lives of families, the bank was very careful to ensure that the algorithms didn't have any gender, racial, religious, or ethnic biases. However, even when everything else was the same, the algorithm started to deny people of color mortgages at a higher rate. Now remember, race, gender, religion, and ethnicity were specifically excluded from the algorithm. So what could have happened here? It turns out that address was collected, and then in the United States and other parts of the world, people of similar backgrounds tend to live together in communities. And it also turns out that people of color have been, his, been historically denied credit at much higher rates and have historically lived in certain zip codes. So if you happen to live in one of these zip codes, you are more likely to be denied credit. This example demonstrates a few things. First, that two or more pieces of data or features are likely to be very tightly connected or correlated. In this case, race, address, and zip code are tightly correlated. And even though race was excluded, the algorithm found the result of historical bias in race correlated to a separate set of features, address, and zip code. Second, it highlights the effect of bias data and how bias is introduced into the data. Because the model was tainted by a historical bias in the data, they were making a bunch of bad decisions really fast. So what does it look like to truly understand bias? It takes highly talented and diverse teams building the AI. It is a set of separate AI algorithms that are used to out identify outliers that represent both known and unknown biases. It's making sure we frame projects in a way that's as unbiased as possible. And it's being transparent with the AI in order to create a trusted foundation for the AI. Now the process of mitigating or remediating bias can still be challenging. 
And to understand why, let's go back to the example of the bank. They were trying to look, they took this very seriously, and their intent was not to be biased against people of color or anyone else for that matter. In fact, the whole point of implementing the AI was to remove the potential of implicit bias affecting the decisions of their underwriters and mortgage brokers. Now, it was not easy for them to understand what happened. Remember, they went to great lengths to try to prevent this from happening in the first place. It was such a challenge, primarily because their teams had to manually go back through the algorithms and untangle what happened. And this isn't an easy process. But we're at an amazing point in time. Technologically, we are at the point where the bias mitigation process can be automatic and can be integral to the entire development life cycle of AI. The right people with the right tools and the right technology can start creating a fantastic future of less biased and more ethical AI in the form of a fully automated end-to-end process that accounts for bias at every step of the way and is overseen by talented and diverse teams. Thinking about the new reality we live in today thanks to the pandemic. Entire economies are shutting down and this is resulting in a world that was once physically connected via air travel becoming completely remote, where millions of people are without work, and many others are working remotely. These fundamental changes in the world are exponentially accelerating the rate and pace of the implementation and adoption of AI. Whatever trajectory we were on has been accelerated because we're relying on data and AI more than ever. But as we interact with AI in our daily lives, we need to be cognizant of the fact that biases can be, and often are, impacting us directly and indirectly. We need to keep in mind that even ethical AI is biased, even if it's consciously biased in a way that's aligned to societal norms. Now we've all heard about the possible benefits of AI, everything from better customer service, to more efficient and resilient supply chains, to a faster and smarter drug discovery process, and so on. And many of us look forward to the innovations and impact that AI can offer. Organizations and individuals want to know that they can trust their data and their AI and explain how it came to a recommendation. Think about how many more organizations would be ready to use AI if they could rely on a trusted and transparent process. Now, when I think about the task at hand, I know we have a lot of work to do, but I am very hopeful. Humans created the bias that's out there in the world today, and together we have a shared responsibility to make sure that AI reflects the best in human thinking, not the worst. Done right, done ethically, AI will help us emerge for the pandemic biased towards a better, more equitable society.